Hey, what's up guys, this is Ant here, and today I have another After Effects tutorial for you guys. It was highly requested for me to do a color correction tutorial, so that's what I'm going to be doing here today. I'm going to be showing you how to do, like, some of the more, the more colorful color corrections that I do, because more recently I've been kind of moving to some um, kind of more simplistic color correction. It doesn't have all the glows and sky glows and all that shit in it. But for this one, I'm going to um, kind of show you the more colorful ones I usually do. So these are probably the ones you guys remember most from my edits. So, for an example, I got Baja's intro right here. It's got kind of like these purple and red stuff going on. It's really colorful, really nice looking. Uh, it's not over the top either. And that's one thing I want to stress with color corrections. It's nice to make color corrections that are really colorful and pretty like that, but you never want to go over the top with them. So if you just follow this tutorial along, I'll show you how to make a decent one that looks good and isn't over the top. So before I jump into this, uh, three plugins I'm going to be using today that do not come with After Effects, uh, Magic Bullet Looks, FL Glow, and Trap Code Shine. Uh, Magic Bullet Looks pretty much an essential plugin to any editor. Um, this is just it's just amazing for making color corrections. Um, I don't know how I'd live without it. Um, you can do so much with it. But actually in this tutorial, uh, for these kind of color corrections, I usually actually don't use much of it. We do use it though. Uh, FL Glow is a great plugin for color corrections. You can make some, that's mainly for making more colorful stuff. And I've even used it for some of my less colorful color corrections like um, Auto Eos, um, that episode I did for him. Um, and then trap could shine. That's um, pretty much the way I make sky glows. So yeah, um, and just one thing. This is just one way to make a color correction. And you can take anything in this kind of tutorial and just mix it up how you want. Find something that you think looks cool. Color correction is kind of all about being creative and putting your own spin on it. So I highly suggest you be a little creative with your color corrections. Um, uh, there's just many variants you can do and just have fun with it. But this is kind of going to, this tutorial is going to kind of help you guys get on like a path to making good color corrections. I guess you could say, I don't know what I'm on about now, but whatever. So, um, first of all, make a new adjustment layer. So layer new adjustment layer and we're going to name it CC one because we're going to make a total of three adjustment layers for this. Um, the reason I don't just apply all the effects to one layer is because it, it affects, it looks better. Just the way they blend, it just looks better if they're all on different adjustment layers because we are using separate plugins for this. So uh, just search up Magic Bullet Looks, and I cannot type M right now because that's apparently a shortcut for my Camtasia thing. And um, I'm going to hit Edit, and oh wow, that actually appeared really quick this time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create kind of a base. And kind of before I get into this, make sure when you're making a color correction, you're using a map that's fairly kind of like not too bright, not too dark. So like, don't make one on Octane from Ghosts. Don't make one on Uplink from Black Ops 2. Don't make it on the dark and light maps. Make it on a map that's kind of like in the middle, kind of like Standoff and Raid. If I'm editing Black Ops 2, I usually use Standoff for making my color correction just because I think the colors blend really well. So uh, we're gonna have, you hover over tools right here. You're gonna come up with your stuff right here. So what we're gonna wanna make is a kind of desaturated and more contrasted version of this. So the first thing we're going to look up is curves. This is how we're going to make our saturation. I mean, not saturation, our contrast. Put the contrast up to like 0 0.35, 0 0.4. Yeah, I think 4 looks a little bit better. Once again, like I said, just play with stuff until it looks good. That's pretty much story making color corrections. So, and these, I don't know what exactly is the dragon stuff down here. I think this is just auto puts these little boxes in their place, but I don't even know. So hue and saturation, I uh, just put the saturation down to 50. Usually put it down to 50 for Black Ops 2 and Advanced Warfare, which are the kind of like more fruity Call of Duty games, I guess you could say. For Ghosts, MW2, MW3, kind of, I'd say put it down to like 65, 70, maybe even 80 for Ghosts, just because that game is gray as shit. Well, shit's brown, not, get, not gray, but you get the idea. All right, next up, we're going to want to add pop. And if you don't know what this is, it's pretty much sharpen um, or unsharp mask. It just makes things look a little like if I zoom in and apply this, see, it just looks a little bit better than it did before. It's kind of ups the quality a little bit, I guess you could say, a little less blurry. And um, little stuff like the HUD makes it look a lot better. This is half resolution right now because the main thing's half resolution. So you're not going to notice too much of a difference. But you did see it kind of um, contrasts the edges a bit. And it just looks really nice, in my opinion. All right, next, go over to Lens and add a vignette. And we're going to make this kind of a bright gray vignette. 
Um, not all the way white or not all the way black like that. So just kind of like gray-ish right there. And then turn that down to like uh, 20. Now what that does, that just kind of brightens the whole thing up a little bit, even kind of the darker map. So um, when we're doing FL Glow a little bit later, it kind of depends on the highlights in the map to actually make the color. So see, it just brightens up the edges a little bit. And that's all we're going to do in Magic Bullet Look. So just hit Finish. And that looks pretty shit so far. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make another adjustment layer. We'll just call it CC2. And we're going to do our FL Glow with this. So this is where a lot of the color correction is going to come from. It's going to create a lot of the um, kind of colorful parts to it. So right off the bat, that just doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do is switch the glow mode from standard to aberrative. And what that kind of does, is that kind of makes it kind of like RGB and has a whole bunch of different colors in it. So the radius of the glows right now are really small. So what that's going to do is pretty much makes so you can't see the color. So let's put this to like 150 or 200. Oh yeah, we got some colors in there. Now that is way over the top and that is not what we want. So um, I'm going to change the aspect of this real quick. 0. 0.4, uh, 0. 0.3. Yeah, I like 0. 0.3. That looks really good. That just kind of makes so the little clothes are a little um, bit small, um, shorter than long. Um, so we're going to go over to selection and hit enable, then go to lightness and we're going to play with the lightness start value. Now this is what this is going to be. This is going to be like how much, how much, how light the spots have to be for it to actually have a glow on it. So just turn this up until some of the glows start to disappear until they're mainly only around the kind of like bright parts. So I'd say about there is good, like 188. It really depends on your clip, though. And so for this one, it's just going to be around 180 or something like that. And yeah, so that looks pretty good to me. So here you can go to uh, Channel Control and hit Enable. And this is how you can play with the color. So um, let's make this one kind of like an orange and red color correction. So I'm just going to turn the red up, turn the blue down, and then turn down the green we got some cool reds in there. Uh, I think that looks pretty nice. I'm actually thinking I'm going to turn the light and the start up just a little bit more. Maybe up like one, no, 200. 200 flat might look good. You want to make sure it has some of the glows kind of on the edges of things too. Uh, 190. And we can also desaturate these as well. So uh, let's go back to right here. And that looks pretty cool. So now we're going to go to color bias. And this is where you can kind of edit the colors a little bit. So I usually desaturate them a little bit. So just play with this value right here. Kind of adds a little more white to them. Then you can also just change the lightness of the glows themselves. So as you can see there, that kind of did add a little bit of... Um, it makes it kind of look kind of pinkish now. So like I said, color corrections is just playing with stuff and already this looks like a pretty cool color correction. So I'd say that'd be fairly acceptable as one, but some stuff you can do extra um, trap code shine. I know I said it's part of the color correction, but um, it's kind of extra uh, if you want to add some more sky glows. So look up. Um, did I say trap code form? Am I fucking retarded? It's trap code shine. Okay, so apply that to a third adjustment layer and wowza, that is not our color correction. Change the transfer mode to shine, I mean screen, and put the source point like up in the sky somewhere, usually right towards the middle of the screen. And then go to pre-process and hit use mask. So uh, mask radius, that's pretty much going to be what part is going to be shining. So something like that, and then play with the feather a bit. So it's a little smaller and may put this back up some. And... Now you have kind of like some sky glows that have some nice rays from it and stuff. It looks really nice. Um, and then you can kind of play with some stuff like color eyes. So you can just do none and have it play in white, but that's boring, so we're not going to do that. And you can just play with some of these preset colors until you find something you like. Um, let's see, something like... Um, no, where's that one? Let's go like some orange in it or something like that. Um, I think that fire one just looks nice, to be honest. Um, 
but you can play some colors in here and stuff. Really, just up to you with how you want to do stuff like this. But let's turn the feather up and then turn the radius down a little bit just to kind of make this stand a little more. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I make more of these more colorful kind of color corrections. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Um, and then you can just play with colors and stuff like this. So if I wanted to change these glows and make them blue or something, like you just play with the hue and it'll do that. And that blue actually looks kind of cool with that fire color on the um, on the shine. You just got to play with things until you find something you really like. But for now, let's just stick to this original one we made. So that's pretty much a basic idea of how I make my more colorful color corrections. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to drop a like in the video. And if any of you guys use this in your tutorial and your edits, feel free to tweet them at me. I'll definitely check them out, see what cool color corrections you guys made. And I will probably put the presets to this color correction down as a download link in the description. So you can just have this color correction to use. Um, just see how I did it. Get a more in-depth kind of look at this. Like I said, just have fun with how you make these. Play with them a little bit. And just be creative with it. So that's what I really urge with this. So once again, drop a like in the video if you enjoyed, if it was helpful to you. And subscribe if you're new. Sant out.